Uh, facilities update. Mark? Okay. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this is the facilities workshop. We're going to be talking about the Gateway High School facility, uh, a summer projects update, and finally the Celebration Island Area Elementary School. We're going to provide an update on it. So the Gateway High School, exciting. Uh, this is number four in our sales tax priority list. So now that we have Michigan Avenue nearly completed, Den John Middle School and St. Cloud Middle School under construction, it's now time to start talking about Gateway High School, number four. So this is the first step in the process, the Castaldi, which is DOE approving the buildings that we are going to request to raise, to demolish, so that we can make way for the new buildings. Um, we have an opportunity with this project in that uh, DOE is actually going to be in the Orlando area uh, mid-July, and I've made arrangements to meet with them, so I'm, I was hoping to get this report submitted. So we have blue-sheeted this item for this evening. Uh, so we're going to present it uh, during the workshop uh, today, and then uh, our intent is, if everything is okay, it approved, be approved at the board meeting, so that we can uh, submit it to DOE tomorrow and get the review process started. So if you Commissioner recall... Commissioner Corcoran was here today. Should, <laughs> I should, should have. have ran up to Bonnet I Creek. should have. But if you recall, the last time that we submitted Castaldi reports, that process took six months because DOE was in a transitional period. Uh, so Mr. Tracy and I, and this is Sean Tracy with the RPH, he's the Director of Education, who was the uh, mastermind of putting the report together. Sean and I traveled to Tallahassee back in January after the first draft was completed to get DOE's input. We really want to be DOE's poster child for how Castaldi's are, are submitted and approved. And uh, Sean and I attended the FEFPA pre-conference session where DOE provided explicit information on things that should be included in Castaldi reports. We heard, we listened, and we, we hope that we are going to submit a report to DOE that will exceed their expectations. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sean, who will run us through uh, the highlights of the Castaldi report. Mr. One, Tracy. Absolutely. One of the challenges that, that we knew we were going to uh, confront with the, the Castaldi is that the buildings aren't 50 years old. They're going to be about 34 years old. 35 when, when demolition occurs. So what we had to I, do is, was identify some extenuating circumstances that existed. Uh, primarily that had to do with security and line of sight uh, because of just the way the, the campus was designed. Uh, also functional adequacy uh, because the original build, the original campus was designed for 500 student stations and it's fluctuated. It's currently about 17 to 1800. It's been as high as 2300. So and it's supposed to in five years go back to that. So it, it, there's, there's some strong deficiencies in that. Uh, and then systems adequacies of the entire system. Technology is probably the most significant one. And again, it relates to security. Um, the, the second page is really, you can see how congested this campus is. Uh, and what we're, what we're doing is part of the Castaldi. Now, the Castaldi, uh, uh, the process to, to identify whether it's more cost effective to renovate rather than replace a building, all 18 of these buildings can Castaldi out. So they can all be raised as the formula applies. We're looking at the removal of the nine buildings that are listed on this, on, on this list. Uh, and when you turn to the next page, uh, buildings, the, the buildings that we're looking at are, are highlighted in red. Uh, and the, the purpose of them are, for example, buildings 1, 18, and 13, and 14 are all very much core-related facilities that are uh, woefully uh, inadequate in terms of size. But then from a security standpoint, they're also positioned incorrectly so that you have to actually go into the campus to be able to, to access these things, these, these areas after hours. So it made a lot of sense from the standpoint of our current understanding of security that those buildings be removed. Uh, the other buildings, the cafeteria, guidance, which sits outside of any perimeter right now, uh, so students actually have to go outside of the secure perimeter to go to guidance. 
the, you know which bill when you talk about that? I'm sorry, Building Four, four. is uh, is yeah. is guidance. I, I I can yeah I, I absolutely okay. know these by number. Okay. Um, is it right here? It's a little one. Oh okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, building Thank Two you. is the is the cafeteria and the kitchen and the receiving <laughs> area. Uh, building Three is the ESE Life Skills uh, building. Building 13 is the gymnasium, and right behind that is the, are, are the PE locker rooms. And then to create this internal courtyard and address all of these lines of sight issues, uh, 11 and 12 are also slated for removal. Now, it's not just the line of sight, it's also the adequacy of those spaces internally. Uh, the JROTC building is, is building 12, and that air, that is very inadequate. Let, let's go on and we can get into some of the details. Um, and removal of these buildings will allow us to do a central point of controlled entry uh, by be being able to <coughs> redefine the perimeter of the campus uh, and then create the new buildings, the new core spaces that are undersized. Uh, but in addition, we're also looking to replace 34 portables that are, are located on site that just continues that sprawl throughout the campus. So there are there is a significant amount of educational uh, space that's going to be uh, replaced as as part of so this as well. So we would be looking to remove those 34 port portables, but possibly use them for swing during the construction project. Right. And and part of the challenge is the sprawl. It takes seven. There's seven minutes that, that's allowed between the bells, which is uh, in comparison five minutes at other campuses because this campus is so sprawling. Yeah. John. So. So we're talking about going up. In, in, in a lot of cases, in yeah, we're, we're, we're looking yes. at, at a, at a multi-story building to address. Because all of these buildings, as, you, as you're well aware, are all single-story buildings, so the sprawl is just pronounced. And we don't have a definitive plan of what that design concept sure. would look no, like sure. now, because first we need to get the DOE to approve the Castaldi. They could come back and say, you know, that building, um, you know, 13 or 18, we we can't allow you to demo it. So that would totally change the plan. Right. So that's why we can't drill down to a concept at this point in time. So if you look at the functional adequacy deficiencies that exist on the campus. Most of it has to do with undersized spaces, uh, whether that is those are core spaces or fundamental uh, uh, CTE spaces that have become, as we know, very critical. That, that career technical education is a, is a very critical component. Uh, and then also, you know, you've got an, a, a national award-winning Marine JROTC program that's, that does not have the space for competitions, does not have a qualifications range, it's got a practice range. So these are the other kinds of things that we're trying to address as part of this program. And they were here presenting to the board it about a year, year ago yep. regarding mm -hmm. those spaces. So we're looking and to address that. And that's something that we're going to keep in mind as we move absolutely. forward on the design. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That would be great. Yes. So um, if we get rid of the 34 portables, are we gaining two minutes per class, or how are that we? That would be the, the desire, to get back to what a normal high school schedule uh, looks like. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So from a systems at equity standpoint, really the highest priority in, in terms of deficiency is technology. Uh, and, and that relates not only to the educational components and, and the 21st century learning aspects of the campus, but also to the security uh, in mass notification and alert systems as well as video surveillance uh, for real-time access to, to uh, information, you know, in times of an event. Then, there's, then there are systems, electrical and plumbing, that are just aged out uh, just because of the age of the campus itself. Um, so the original campus, again, it wasn't designed with the same understanding from a security standpoint that we equate with security today. You've got significant line of sight issues because of the way the buildings were positioned. Um, and then the location of the community-oriented buildings, the cafeteria, the gymnasium, the, the performing arts center, are in the heart of the campus rather than around, along the perimeter close to parking where people can access those spaces but they don't have to go into the campus and cause problems uh, and become, gain access to other aspects of the, of the campus that they shouldn't have. So that's, that's kind of the, the other thing. And that includes the media center that's located to the rear of the campus. Absolutely. So when you open up the space for community events, you lose command and control of those visitors on your campus. 
So, and finally, within, within even the uh, existing buildings, and the existing buildings to remain, are, there's going to be a comprehensive component to this project that's going to address envelope issues, that's going to address adequacy issues in those existing buildings. One of those, from a security standpoint, are window heights. The windows go all the way down to the ground. Aside from the moisture issues, it also, there are no safe corners uh, in, in any of these classrooms as a result of that. There's no place to hide. So those are things that we, we suggest need to be addressed as part of the, a part of the project. So uh, the Casaldi, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, it, it takes care of, you know, we can actually replace all of buildings 1 through 18 by the Castaldi formula. What we are asking for are the, re, are the uh, replacement of 1, 2, 3, 4, 11 and 12, 13, 14 and 18. And that's specifically to address fundamental adequacy issues, as well as security components. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, there's, there's a significant amount of work that's going to need to be done just on the envelopes itself for the remaining buildings that would, that, that would need to be addressed. It's about $8.5 million, as we've identified it in the Castaldi report itself. If we were to leave it for an, an extended period of time. If we, yeah. Um, so the cost to the, the, the renovate the buildings is roughly two to three times when you look at the, the analysis that, that was done. Uh, and then for Building 18, which is the Performing Arts Center, and, and we've got a lot of pictures that, that uh, define that, it was done before the, the advent of the ADA, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990. It was designed before that. So there are a slew of things uh, in, in addition to the size itself that makes the replacement of that building just on its own uh, almost indefensible to, in, in terms of being able to say we, we need to replace that building. So, you know, we're, we're looking at the, the replacement that we talked about. Uh, we understand that funding is inadequate, so what we're looking at is the, the, the buildings that we're talking about as well as a partial replacement for buildings two which would be the kitchen, the, uh, the serving area, the original cafeteria component, and the receiving area. We would be leaving the addition that was done just recently. So a surgical approach where we're raising only the buildings we need, renovating the existing buildings to be fiscally responsible. And then the, the final piece of the, of the puzzle would really be to look at the site itself and, and address some of, the, some of the circulation issues, vehicular, pedestrian, service, bus, all of those kind of coming into one location when you look at it at, at, the, at the end of the day, that, how that all works. To the school's credit, there hasn't been a problem. Sean, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you think our chances are with the DOE on this plan? Based on the, I will, I will tell you, based on, on what, we have, what we have done and the, the, the back leg work that we had, that we did for, uh, for the video and, and the other thing, I would put us at, Eight, nine. Okay. Yeah, I, I would put us very high. There's nothing that would make me say a 10 when it's talking about DOE. <laughs> no, I get that. Another question I have, and I wish uh, John Boyd were here, but, and you may remember Ricky or somebody here. In some of this, legis this last legislative uh, process, they passed some legislation that allowed us to spend some of our locally generated money that did not come from the state on things that are above the per classroom uh, state guidelines. Does that? I remember the exact language. I, you I know what I'm talking about? I do know that was addressed. <clears throat> are you talking about Senate Bill 7070? Uh, I think so. Okay. Uh, most recent. My, under most recent. my understanding about how that works is that they've left the cost per student mm -hmm. station intact. Right. They've taken out the sanctions right. associated with exceeding cost per student station and they've removed the the limits, especially on security, mm -hmm. uh, from from the language that you know that it was two percent of the cost right. per student station. They've removed that portion of the language from the uh, from the bill. And the removal and, but my understanding too was the money that we spent above their yes their designated amount had to come from local funds. Not state funds. Not yeah, state. The, the sanctions are. And I guess for where I'm going with that can, can yeah. that be read or understood to expand if these are indeed local funds? Can we do some things 
quite frankly, I don't want to say without their approval, but is there intent in that legislation that we can do some of these things, quite frankly, whether they say we can or not, because they're with local funds? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. That's but a good question. Because don't we need their approval because it's a Castaldi? Is that yeah, why? the Castaldi is for the raising. Yeah. So the cost per student station is a report that we generate cost of construction after we complete the project. However, we're monitoring that on the front end. So we get when we get to the tail end, we know you're that we're taking we'll be in things extremely literal but, the way they used to be. I'm not right. sure that's what you're saying now. Is not open you know, to interpretation. Should look into. So, but yeah. I, and Frank's not. We're here. not quite to that point. No, we're not. Because but really, Castaldi allows you to, to to knock down the building in the first place. Right. And if you can't get to that point, then you can't get to the to the to the building. Mr. Are you, are you, are you yes. bringing that up, um, Mr. Thacker, because in case we don't get this approved? Another way to get all of these. Okay, I understand now. But you got to have the Castaldi first. You have to have it. And in fact, when you start the construction or the yeah you know, the construction project, we'll have to submit a spot you, survey as well. But you couldn't tear them down. Yeah, you can't tear them down without. Right. So right? We, I don't know. That's, all right. Well, I get where I, you're going. With it. I get where you're going. With it. So that we can. I don't know the answer to that question. So that we can research this. Were you also were you thinking this, Mr. Thacker, too, as well? Say they approve certain buildings, but they don't approve the others. Mm -hmm. they, they do everything, but they do everything. are performing arts center. Okay. Would local dollars be permitted at that point to cover that other portion? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the question. So that's we will have to research that. And get I'm not sure if it's about the construction of the building yeah. or it's, it's about the raising. Yeah. Seventy seventy is about yeah. the cost per student station. It's I not understand it's part of the cost of the student station. I can tell you, tearing these buildings down is part of the cost per student station. Maybe yeah, it becomes part of it. Absolutely. Look at you. Yes. <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't know. Yeah. Clerk is a good move today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. Just a thought. So depending on how. The I, I love your answer on the, what was it an eight or a nine on DOE? Yeah. Yeah. We've done our homework. I mean, we have really followed their their uh, guidance to the T. Yeah. And again, we put something together that we really hope will exceed their expectations. We just completed the video today. It's a video tour of that campus, so that DOE can have a firsthand look. And, and it includes you know drone flights of the campus. It's very well done. Is that part of the cost per student session? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Prior, prior <laughs> to Marjorie, house. I, I will say prior to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, I'd have put this down at about a four. Mm. Okay. Okay. Is it really the safety and security? It's really, and and it's you know we we knew about the, the the issues related to moisture and the envelope and the educational adequacy, but trying to defend that against a 34 year old building was going to be a trick. Uh, when. You know, when that when that occurred, uh, it, as a matter of fact, the original discussion that that Mark had with DOE was, yeah, security is not part of the part of the equation in this. That was before Marjorie Stoneman. And then and then all bets were off. Okay. And so that became. No, I love a, the approach. I yeah. I mean, no, no, thank you guys for all. Yes, work. We thank you. Yeah. So we'll Great work. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, that sure. concludes the Gateway High School Castaldi. So this will be on good the to board agenda for the. the um, for the, for the actual approval of the report. Right. Are you so saying? we can then submit it to... Uh, Only if you want me to. No. <laughs> no, no, no. We would not do that to you. No. <laughs> it was great to meet Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Oh, well, if you had us at a two or three, we might make it. Eight or nine, you get to leave. <laughs> so with that, we'll move into our summer projects update. I'll ask uh, my director, uh, design and construction, to join us, Mark Lockard. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. To, to your question earlier on the... Uh, the DOE approval, but the whole Castaldi thing kind of came in when back in the day when the state provided most of the funds to build these buildings. So that's why yeah. they want to have a say in, sure. in tearing it down. That later. was the argument, and, yeah. and, and to that point, Mr. Thacker and I's meeting with, with, with then Speaker Corcoran was about uh, that whole issue of state versus local funds and those kind of things, and he was very receptive, so we do appreciate that as well. Of course, we get very little state funding now. And we don't get that. <laughs> no, I understand. Okay. Capital-wise. So um, we're, we're going to talk about our major projects first and then some of our smaller miscellaneous projects. Harmony Middle School, uh, we're, we're really doing well. Uh, this, the FF&E started earlier this month. So, and, and they're actually punching out the project now. Typically, that doesn't happen until substantial. And our substantial on this project is June 25th? 26th. 26th. 
Uh, so we're really feeling good about this. Uh, it's been, you know, a reasonable schedule. And, and at the start of this process, we were very concerned about the permitting. And that worked really well. The, the, we did our homework with the Army Corps of Engineers. They were complimentary. Everything worked out with South Florida Water Management District. So we were able to maintain uh, a normal construction timeline for this project. So uh, we're, we're looking good for uh, uh, August opening. Uh, Neo City Academy, uh, this is a project that did come to us late. And it's been an aggressive schedule from day one. Our substantial completion is July 15th. And I, I will say that we are going to be pushing right out to that date. Uh, you know, the, the project is looking very well. It's on schedule, but there's still a good amount of work to do. Uh, so we are trying to find opportunities as we work through the project. We're meeting with our CM weekly, in some cases daily, uh, to, to seize all those opportunities we can. But, um, you know, it, it remains an aggressive schedule. We knew that from, sure. from the start of the project. But we will continue to monitor it, pull it, push it, whatever it takes to get it over well, the finish line. I mean, I mean sure. the other board members can speak for themselves, but let's do it right, uh, e even if it's September before it opens. Um, let's do it right. And, and the other part of this project is there's great community interest on this project. Other school districts have contacted us. You know, they're really impressed. With well, what I'll we're give doing. any of our secrets away. That's tours. <laughs> I actually have a question about um, if, if this is delayed, which, again, I agree with um, Mr. Booth about doing it correctly. Would When would we start on the process for Gateway? Because aren't so, all of the kids that are in Neo City at Gateway? They are at the, the old ninth grade center. So that's Gateway not High affected School. in it's any a way. Of one of those buildings. Okay. So, um, but we're a year out or more from doing anything at Gateway High School. Oh, okay. Yes. I just need to know. There's only the freshman campus that was out there. So this year they'll have the freshman and the sophomore campus starting at the okay. new in the new building. Right. We'll add one grade level per year. So we're, you know, we're we're going to open this for students. There's, we will. <laughs> Uh, that's that's not optional. No plan. We will do that, uh, but uh, it's it's just a matter of how smoothly we land at our substantial. But again, we're we'll continue to push it. Uh, we're feeling uh, good, but we're monitoring it very closely. Next project is Denjon Middle School. We have a major summer phase that we'll complete at Denjon Middle School, uh, building two and three. That's the new ESE and uh, Advent Suite. So that will become the new front door for the campus when we demolish the old building. Uh, music building will also be renovated, and that will be ahead of schedule. Uh, that was not called for for the summer. Building 5, which is the gym, the locker room uh, addition, will be completed. Uh, central energy plant is well on its way. So in, over the holidays, we'll be landing the larger building 1. At, at that time, we'll be able to move staff and students to the new building 1 and start the um, the raising of the existing building one. So project's in great shape. And so admin won't move. Even though the building will be ready, admin won't actually move in until the, the big move in winter break. Okay, next project is uh, Michigan Avenue. So we're completing the final phase, phase two, which is the renovation of building three and the new bus loop, which you can see the outline of that new loop, covered walkway, uh, all underway. So building one and two landed over spring break. And, and this is actually a pretty good time to talk about the next project, St. Cloud Middle School. We have actually started the early phase for St. Cloud Middle School, that courtyard area. And the building you see up in the up top left is building five. So the new courtyard uh, will be in that grassy area uh, next to building five. And this is what the new elevation will look like. Again, you can see the uh, creation of that new secure courtyard around mm -hmm. um, you know, the admin building in the front, classroom buildings, band building to the back, media center off to the side. And of course, this school will share the kitchen cafeteria. We'll do the tenant build out uh, in building two, uh, which was built within Michigan Ave as part of this project. Our other summer project update, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Rocker to run through that list. As if we didn't have enough to do, we 
we've got a couple of uh, smaller but also very important projects that we're working on. We're, we're working on four kitchen serving line upgrades. Well, we continue with that. We've, we've gotten the high schools, the middle, and now we're getting into the elementary schools as well. You can see Cypress, uh, Narcusi, Ventura, and Zenith are all underway. We're, uh, we'll have uh, one of the, the board actions is for Zenith this evening. You see that. Yeah. We're doing space reconfiguration projects also at four campuses, and the idea there is we're saving portables. We're creating space internal to the school, usually using resource rooms that are technically too small to, to qualify as classrooms. In most cases, <coughs> there are, they're actually being used currently as classrooms, but they're not getting credit for it because they're too small. So we're rearranging uh, those spaces to, to free those up and to get better utilization of, of the uh, core spaces. Uh, we're doing kitchen uh, generators at three sites that we typically stand up as shelters if we stand up any shelters at all. We got this from our last experience with the, with the hurricanes when we lost power. We so brought in uh, generators from uh, the far Midwest and area. Philadelphia. Oklahoma and Philadelphia of all <laughs> places. But yes, uh, so now we, the search will be over. We'll have them you know, actually sitting there waiting to go. And, and of course, that's at, at Harmony High School, Liberty High School, and Kissimmee Middle. Again, those are our key shelters. Do we Lago, get special money for this stuff for being a shelter or not? Or are these fun? Do we have to put the bill on? Actually, School Nutrition Services is, is funding uh, the, the generator projects. No, I get that. But <clears throat> we're doing this primarily, I'm assuming, for, because they're shelters. Yeah, we're yes. actually required we to get... stand up X amount of uh, shelters. We work <clears throat> with our Orange County Emergency Management uh, to determine where we need is shelters. Is there any state and federal Yeah, are there state and federal funds for that? Why is it up to an individual school district to pay for that? There's statutory language that requires you to use the miss shelters. Um, the state did offer to fund some screening so that people could walk from the cafeteria to the gym or whatever. But when we spoke to our regular architect, um, it was going to be ugly. That's the way I put it, so we turned down that fund. There are some operational impacts yeah. to doing that. As far as operating the school during the day, it would have been also No, no, I'm just talking about the $1.4 <laughs> million dollars for generators. I'm not sure that I get completely. I get that our schools are built to be sheltered. We use them for shelters. I get all those things, but I'm not sure. I, is the intent that the school district has to pay for well, we, we spent about half that when we brought in the two generators. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now we'll, we will own these generators. They'll be there when, a, you know, a storm rolls I'm in. Not, <laughs> I'm not questioning the generator. Never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm questioning who's paying for them. Bell Lago? Yeah, Bell Lago, we've, uh, since we originally built that uh, facility, we've had the, uh, the community kind of build up around us. And it, originally it didn't uh, bother anybody but the cattle, I guess, in the area. Now there, there's homes surrounding us. We're being good neighbors, and we're putting a sound wall up around uh, our new chillers that are a bit noisy. Another uh, problem area that we're solving this summer is the Celebration K-8 play area. That's just a sand pit. We've actually tried in the past to irrigate Bermuda, and it just gets too much traffic. So we are fixing that with uh, with turf. That's already like underway. Yeah, evidently, we'll yes. get the feeder. Oh, now, is that going to be the? Um, is that turf back sponsored by Underground Beverage? Back, <laughs> back up to the. Well, somebody got turf. me back there. Yeah, Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> are they going to put his logo on? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. So that's about half the cost of the football field. So how big is this area? Well, this includes other improvements okay. as well. Okay. And, and a large part of this project is a temporary road to get in there. That area okay. is somewhat landlocked. So, uh, but it, it will be, you know, certainly it's not going to become our standard for playgrounds. This was a unique situation. When the school originally opened, uh, there was half the amount of elementary school students, yep. and now with all the foot traffic. And there are some potential safety issues that were going to address as part of this project as well. Uh, one, one project that kind of popped up on us is the Narcusi Elementary School entryway. This has been an ongoing issue with, with the county and us. We have backed up 
traffic onto NARCUC on a regular basis. If you frequent that area, don't need to uh, go into that any, in any more detail. Yeah, we talked about that. I, I just, and maybe you're going there, and I'm sorry for interrupting, but what is the timeline on that? Are we going to be able to get it done? We are pushing to get it done this summer, and it's going to be a, a tough push. Um, we just had the bid walk. We actually had seven companies um, that, that are interested. Uh, bid opening is the 24th of June. We hope to get you know good good uh, a, you know a bid that's in, in compliance with our project budget. So we had good coverage. That was the first challenge. So now it's getting a bid that will be uh, in compliance with our project budget. But we will push very hard. In fact, we've already had OUC relocate the light poles so that when we build the new roadway, and it's not real difficult work. It's just you know several components and the bigger challenge it coming to us very late because unlike neo city being a month late this not being right on august uh 12 13 10th whatever today is uh, it's, it's going to be a big deal yeah. Yeah. You're right. right understood and we will push it uh so we also have well and also let me mention we were able to find the money to do this project originally we had a playground funded for narcusi elementary school and when this project came up, we took the funds from that playground to apply towards this because we were able to get a, a playground donated. Uh, Balfour Beatty, uh, representatives are in the, the, the room. Thank you. They contacted uh, us and said, hey, we're doing a project out at SeaWorld. Uh, they don't have a uh, need for this playground. It's in the way of future development. Uh, would you be interested in it? So that's absolutely. what's going to celebration? That's what's going to Narcusi Elementary School. Right. <laughs> Right, so um, we're going. We're now in the process of reinstalling, recertifying that playground, but that was able to give us the headroom so that we could do this project. So, our sincere appreciation of Belfort Beatty to for making this happen. Uh, so we have other miscellaneous capital projects totaling 6.8 million, and Dr. Pace asked uh, also that I mention we have submitted our cost of construction report for Toho High School. It came in at $28,084 cost per student station. The cap is $31,446. So we were $3,362 below the, the maximum. We continue to have uh, maintain low cost per student station in Osceola County. You might better add that back into what it's going to cost to turf that field. Mm -hmm. So uh, that concludes our summer project update. Uh, we'll now move over to Celebration Island Area Elementary. Uh, uh, Frank, yeah, can I back up <clears throat> the generators? <clears throat> are we statutorily required to have generators? No, we are right, required then. to have connections for generators. Right. Then if we're only buying the generators for the shelters, the agreement with the county provides uh, well, they, shall, they, shall, hang on. Okay. they shall identify and deploy needed resources for shelter operations. And to me, if they want the generator, they should buy it. If that's, but if there's other reasons why we're buying there it. There are other reasons, okay. and it's for the, the food storage. Um, okay. When we have generate our power go down, we have lots of food spoilage so that will eliminate those challenges why school nutrition services is funding I'll ask him about that. are there any other questions some no, Roger okay. Okay. Mark, and Mark. okay we'll turn it over to uh frank krappenbucker to talk about celebration <laughs> island members of board on celebration isle there is uh i think you're aware there are a are a multitude of regulatory agencies involved in this particular site, all of which have pending or will have pending permit applications. And it is the, the, the recommendation of the superintendent um, based on facilities input, and I legally agree with this, that the board okay that we will notify and do an amended agreement not to commence construction this August but to commence it next August when all permits should be in place and there's no potential delay or, or problem 
that could come up, which could be horrific for us if we got a quarter of the way into it and had to shut down because of a permit issue. I've worked with counsel for Madame, and she is drafting, and we're going to work through an amendment to the agreement to effectuate this. Uh, we, Dr. Pace and I met with Celebration Company. They understand it and are in agreement with it. But it's the only prudent thing to do to properly fiscally be responsible for us. So we start the permitting process today. They, the permitting process, we're advised, has commenced, but you've got so many agencies involved uh, that you could file your permit application a month ago, mm -hmm. and they'll turn and say, we're not getting to it till September or October. No, I get it. But I right, have right. Right. Yes, but, uh, has represented they're in the way with the permitting process. They're trying to get it done. I, I'll tell you as a lawyer, I feel bad for them given the number of agencies. Having dealt with each one of those agencies, one in and of itself can be a nightmare. But they're working on it. So uh, Dr. Pace has had analyzed and uh, Rhonda has advised that barring a hurricane mess that, that took out a school or something, we can operate without uh, an impairment to our operations for another year. We would see an impairment if we did not get underway uh, next summer. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Right, good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He, he is with Dr. Pace. He's here. He's here. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, he's meeting, tonight. he's meeting with Dr. Pace. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I really <laughs> thought he was. <laughs> The next are quiet today. And that concludes our facilities workshop. If there's any questions, well, we, we got this part right. Is it impact people? Yep, this is our next workshop, and I'll ask uh, Ms. Rhonda Blake uh, to join us at the table. Where is this on our agenda? Which is part of the facilities update. No, this is not part of the facilities so workshop. So do we have another several. agenda or uh, is this item agenda? It's, it's, it's on the back of the same packet. Yeah, no, I get that. Do so we have this advertised and anywhere? It is part of the meeting tonight. That's the way I do business. I understand that, but it's a part of the workshop. Open we, board business. Because we can do it under open board discussion. No. That's up to you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Krabenbacher? Pardon me. When I look at the agenda, this item is not on the agenda here. Are we okay having this discussion under open board discussion since it was not advertised? Yes, because you're not taking any action okay. at this meeting. It'll just be dialoguing. Okay. And it will, or you could wait to deal with this to where it is on the agenda under my seat tonight if you prefer. No, we can, uh, as long as we're okay. You can, I'd recommend you talk about it now okay. and because I will be asking you to take some action okay. at the board meeting, and that way you'll have the benefit of the input and dialogue from this meeting. Okay. Um, in the absence of Ms. Graber, who's at the FTE conference, I've been asked to come to the table to go back with this. So, you know, in April, Ms. Caswell came before the board with the presentation asking the district to take into consideration the impact of zero bedroom housing units, which is literally just a studio apartment with no walls, just a bedroom and maybe a kitchen, and they would be at 550 square feet or less, and then they propose, based on the census data that they use to make their assumption for their calculation, the impact for such a unit would warrant about $552, because based on the data they presented, um, zero bedroom units would be highly unlikely to generate students. Is this... Um are those Osceola County numbers? Yes, they took all the data from the 2016 census mm -hmm. and they presented just um, that data on that. The only time there was Orlando data involved, if you recall, they called some of the local um, apartment communities and said if you had an apartment of this size, how many people would you allow in it? And in that situation, they did call Osceola and Orange County and that data, I believe, is on page four with those summaries and they all said it would be two. So for the ordinance, once an alternative calculation is presented to the school board, we have 60 days to make a decision whether or not we believe it um, complies with the criteria in the ordinance. So at this point we do need to so get it, the- So it's been challenged, so to speak, is that what you're saying? By, 
Well, anybody can provide an alternative calculation if okay. they believe they're providing a product that's not typically covered in the existing ordinance. They being the county? The county, I can tell you that I have other people waiting in line to submit additional alternative calculations for one bedroom unit, I mean, two bedrooms. Who's doing the calculation? The are county engineers or the, I mean, people like we hire that do them or just a development company says I'll do my own analysis? Well, for this particular one, the county did all of their data and then they paid for our consultant to analyze the data to see if the findings were within the guidelines. So we went for two, three years charging, you know, point one for multifamily when we all sitting here knew that that was incorrect. And now obviously it's point five. And I still don't even believe that. I think that's low. Um, but we're, no, go ahead, Frank. Uh, just so you know, the recommendation you would get tonight from staff is that uh, the county be informed that the school board is not interested in piecemeal modifying impact fee categories prior to the planned fall 2020 study on impact fees. Further included in that motion would be that uh, the school board believes multifamily based upon size needs to be looked at comprehensively and not in a piecemeal manner and that Dr. Pace and I be directed to properly convey the position of the school district to the to the board. Yeah, I, I get concerned when we start. I mean, are we going to have a once a month or we'll, be able, we'll have blue houses next year. Yeah. Kids don't live in blue houses. I, I don't mind I, the way we looked at the resort <clears throat> rental properties, which are actually essentially hotels, um, but just fall under a weird category permitting-wise, mm -hmm. and we were able to address that. We addressed the short-term rental with some real numbers that we were able to generate, yes, and I think that's fine. And, and obviously, We addressed that in our normal process. We did, and, I, and in these are lawsuits we would have <coughs> likely lost. Um, but th there's just no data. There's such a limited amount of data here. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if anybody here can answer, maybe Scott or somebody on the staff. How many families do we still have actually living in a hotel? So How many students do we still have? I mean, at one time, I remember the number was like 4,000. So what is a zero bedroom unit? It's essentially a hotel room. Um, and so, Except they accepted those. and if the plan is for somebody to build these zero bedroom How units, they to, to, to move somebody out of a hotel unit into no, but, it, then you're, they're taking the kids too. It's so, a phony um, thing. could you get that same? Price? I guess if I was to piecemeal anything out at this moment in time, I mean, if you could do, and Frank, uh, you'll have to give me some guidance on this, but if you could do something like 18 and up, I mean, I'd be, I'd be okay with it, but if you can't, then, then I'd. Um, I, 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 I agree with your statement. I'd be for the bottom. Wait until we do it in 2020. If somebody builds some of these, and there's nobody, there's no kids in them. That's great. We've got the numbers. Uh, we've got some volume, and we can go from there. So now nobody's on, probably going to build them with a thirteen thousand so dollar actual impact. instead of assumption. Right, and somebody's got to explain to me if you've got four thousand kids coming out of single family hotels out of zero bedroom housing right, units. How are they? How is that going to be? I mean, candidly, if I had a family, I'd rather be. In an apartment complex, I'm fairly sure hotel there's some complex. people who would love to build those apartments. Right. And so, uh, for that reason, yes. but yes. you yes. said early on when we first did the impact fees that, and it was represented that the next time would be in the fall of 2020 when there'd be another study. We have multiple people raising multiple different approaches to us. Yes. So I don't know how we would go down this path and not say. Well, we're going to start going down every path That's that what everybody. I mean. be no. Blue houses. Kids don't live in blue houses. Yeah. So that that would be the recommendation tonight from the staff, and then we'll see how the county proceeds. Did we Is get the impact fees when they built the hotel room? In our in our packet. No, they're exempt. Right. Which I'm not. Yes, I oh, thought I saw yes. in the packet, right? Yes, this was the original study presented. Yeah. I attached it last night. In yeah. the email. I saw that. Thank yeah. you for doing that. So, yeah. I thought it might. Yeah. Um, okay. uh, otherwise, in my opinion, the less said about this issue on the record, the but, better off. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have, my problem with it is not the concept. It's one it's concept at a time. Yeah. And we were consistent with that two and a half years ago or so when we did it. We waited until we met our third year or so from the original, from the prior study. So look at them as a whole. Yeah, now, yeah. so you know the county could come back and say, we sure, agree yeah. and we're going to do a study on everything now and accelerate the study. 
that. If they do that, they pay for that, right? Right. Well, that's what I, I remember. I think it was the folks from the growth task force um, wanting an extra study, and I, well, I think we were totally open to it. You wanted to pay for the study, yeah. go for it. Um, that we were done paying for studies. This technically will open up in off. the spring with the final new study being done by the fall of 2020, so we're not too far away. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board, we will stay Bring us here. back some uh, luxury homes, luxury <laughs> apartments, then we'll talk about it. <laughs>